Funding for the production of Public Square provided by the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, working to improve the lives of vulnerable children. I completely lost contact with friends, family. Everything was taken away from me. The biggest danger to adolescents in foster care is that they have to be adults faster than they need to be adults. The, the biggest help for a kid is to be a kid. My foster parent told me, I'm not going to be paid for you anymore. I'm only giving you one month to get out of my house. It's hard enough raising a teenager when you have an intact family. So I think one of the things we want to do is, if we can, in this bigger picture, try to preserve families wherever possible. We need to see every relationship that that child has as an opportunity and work so hard to preserve it. We don't think outside the box often enough. And I don't believe the system encourages young people to be more vocal. We kind of put them in silos as though they were separate, different kids. They're all our kids. Judge, is that something that can change? Welcome to Public Square, where civic dialogue takes center stage. You're just fighting to survive in this world that you've been thrown into, and you may not necessarily understand that world. On any given day in New Mexico, there are about 200 young people in foster care who are about to hit age 18. That means they are then defined as adults and lose most of the services they rely upon daily. The outcomes for these youth are not good. Only 25% graduate from high school and one third report having no place to live at times. One quarter have attempted suicide and girls are more than twice as likely to be pregnant by age 19. What can we do to improve upon this situation? Sure, not the same, not the Today, we will hear from young people who are transitioning out of the foster care system, as well as youth advocates who work with them. Then we'll hear from State Senator Michael Padilla, Patrice Peralt of the Children, Youth and Families Department, and Judge John Romero, who presides over the Children's Court Division. One problem for these young people is having a consistent adult figure in their lives. So before we begin, Here's a look at one program that matches youth who are transitioning from foster care with adult mentors. Crystal Goolsby and Julie Thomas love hanging out together, but this is more than just a friendship. Julie is a mentor for Crystal who transitioned out of foster care several years ago. I had a mentor when I was younger uh, who really helped me out a lot. She made a huge difference in my life and me being here today. And I saw that as an opportunity to give something back to the community and to a young adult. I wanted just kind of like a friend just someone to be there, someone who's not paid to be in my life, someone just to be there when I need them, to be able to talk to about things and not have to worry about them writing it down on a paper and submitting it. So we went that way. The New Mexico Child Advocacy Networks launched the mentor program two years ago to help youth cope with transitioning out of foster care. We get, we get all day to hit the whole thing. So. Up to that point in their life, everyone is paid to be there. And it means a lot to them that someone chooses to spend time with them and chooses to be in their life. What you think? That's good. Yeah? It has really been rewarding to see how meaningful some of those relationships have become so quickly. That's a good attitude. No, that's not, that's not a good attitude, but trying everything is a good attitude. She and I have the same sense of humor. Uh, we both love books. Uh, we're both not real super outgoing, but, but do okay. So we're a little on the shy side, but you know, we just, we had so much in common that we love. So for my birthday in October, Julie took me to the melting pot. I had never been there before, and she like got like the princess package or whatever, and I'm like not a girly girl, but it was so fun anyways, because you get like a little tiara on your head, and you get like a boa to wear, and they just treat you so nice, and we just got to talk and have fun and eat cheese and chocolate, <laughs> it was good. Thank you. One of the things that we like to do or we'll hit some of the festivals and things, Crystal had called me and wanted to go to the Coffee and Chocolate Festival, 
that they were holding at the fairgrounds. I can't believe it was so crowded, but we had a blast. Carolyn is good. Crystal loves to taste everything and anything. I like that one. I just kind of let her lead wherever she wanted to go, and I kind of talked to the people at each booth to see where they were from, and we had fun doing that. We kind of work as a team. Oh, samples. I want one. <laughs> I figured you would. <laughs> She'll just give me those, like, little pick-me-ups whenever I need them, whenever, even when I don't expect it. She'll be like, hey, I was just thinking about you today, and that means so much because I'm so busy with everyday life doing task after task after task that I often don't remember to think about myself and how much I really mean. When you go through the mentor program, they ask that you commit a year to the child, but most mentor and mentee relationships go much more beyond that. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yum. Pretty much, she's gonna be in my life forever. <laughs> I've seen how difficult it is for older youth in foster care, and once they get out, how lost they can really be. I feel like what would have helped me in my transition of aging out of foster care would have been the more support that I needed to find the resources and also the freedom to learn how to make mistakes, to learn how to succeed on my own. These kids, with the trauma that they've been through, the loss, the neglect, the poverty, they're starting really from even further back than a lot of other kids. So they need that support so much more, and yet they have so much less of it. When children are young in foster care, we, we tend to view them as victims. But when they turn 18, we tend to turn the system back on them and not treat them that way. And, and I think it's important to remember sometimes um, you know, what, what the journey we're asking these, these young people to go on. Just like any of us, they need the kind of support, encouragement, inspiration, and direction that everyone else needs. So we need to be providing that. That's our responsibility as, as a community and a country.